They were responding to an alleged domestic violence call out, but two police officers have ended up on the other side of the law. Both charged for using excessive force while arresting a 92 year old man who ended up in hospital. A crime editor, Simon Boda, joins me. Simon, this sounds pretty serious. Enough for the police commissioner to come out on it today. What are you hearing? Well, it certainly is very serious. When you, when you think about two police officers, they're facing very serious charges. Their careers are in jeopardy. There is no doubt about that. What we do know is that they were charged last night. The police commissioner herself has watched the body-worn video camera of the alleged incident. She watched that today. Um, the whole background to it goes back to January. Um, a woman who we understand is possibly suffering dementia, who is the man's wife, rang police twice, triple zero calls, mm -hmm. saying uh, that she was under some sort of threat. The police went, made an arrest of the 92-year-old man. During that arrest, his hands were handcuffed um, and he was then taken to hospital suffering a fractured right elbow and bruising to his arms and head. Now, the investigation then began pretty quickly as to the background, to what happened in that arrest procedure. Okay, you made the point there, the police commissioner watched that video this mm -hmm. morning. We haven't seen it though, right? No, it hasn't been released publicly and uh, I suspect you won't see that until the matter actually hits court and it mm. becomes part of the evidence, but it's, it's part of the investigation at the moment. It, it seems like they've acted pretty quickly on this because we know that in the past, and there are particular cases that come mm. to mind, that, uh, that their reaction has been pretty appalling, to be honest. Look, Ali, you've just got to look back to last year, um, to Cooma in southern New South Wales, 95-year-old Claire Nolan, who was, um, who was allegedly tasered by police and subsequently died. Now, the police officer involved in that incident has been charged and is currently before the courts. There were problems with that case in that much of the information wasn't released as promptly as what it probably could have been and uh, some of the details were in fact not released until the media had discovered them. So I guess one of the reasons the police commissioner has come out so quickly today is to avoid any suggestion mm. of that happening again. I mean even just the fact that um, the police commissioner watched that body worn mm. vision herself because of course at the time when Claire um, Nalland died um, she actually refused to and that was one, one of the big issues so the, the, the transparency this time around just feels very different. Uh, what specifically are, are the charges that those police officers are facing? Well, we're looking at a constable and a senior constable. Yeah. Um, they're both facing a charge of assault occasioning actual bodily harm, and the constable, I believe, is also facing a charge of assault. You yeah. right, Ron? You okay, Ron? Ronald Hodge is frail, his family protective. Yeah, we're not doing any comments, thank you. Okay, you guys okay? Yeah. It's alleged the 92-year-old is the victim of police brutality, his elbow fractured being arrested earlier this year. Now... We've charged two police officers with assault. Those charges followed a five-month review. It began when Ron's wife rang triple zero twice in January. Officers responding to the suspected domestic violence case, arresting and allegedly injuring Ron in minutes. It's now believed his wife suffers dementia and the call for help may not have been genuine. What the court will need to determine is whether there was excessive force used. The male constable and senior constable are facing charges that carry a maximum five years jail. From today, they have been suspended from duty. The news shaking locals in Tiny Picton. It's disgraceful. Something like that when they're supposed to be protected by police is just not on. The case follows Claire Nowland's death, the elderly dementia patient who died after being tasered in her nursing home. This incident was also captured on police body cam, but unlike Kuma. I watched that video uh, within the last hour. Whilst I you know, have my own thoughts and feelings about that, I can't comment about that because I don't want to prejudice any court matter. So both of those charges are very serious. Um, but I guess what we've got to also look at is it's got to be proved in court mm. that excessive force was used or wasn't used. And that's going to be up to the magistrate to decide when it actually does hit court eventually. Because uh, I think that's a really important point, right, that there is a process that needs to play out here. And, and when, you can hear, when you hear about an elderly man suffering such injuries and in being in hospital, mm. um, you can make up your own mind about that. But we're also sending police officers into a situation where they're told it's a domestic violence scenario. We're not there, so we don't know what they're being presented with. Ali, I think if you look at the statistics, 
um, each year in New South Wales alone, there are 140,000 domestic violence calls to police. Mm. Every time police go to a door and knock on that door to respond to one of those calls, they don't know what's on the other side of that door. And it could be a completely um, innocuous event or it could be extremely serious. We've seen enough domestic violence murders in the last year to suggest that anything could be serious. They could find anything. Um, that doesn't excuse excessive force, but that's not up to us to decide. That's going to be up yeah. to the courts to decide. And of course they'll be in court in late July, so we'll wait for that date. Thank you for that, Simon. Thanks, Ali.